Okay, when, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Lawton for inviting me to make this presentation. Um, when she first asked, uh, I wasn't quite sure what everything was about, and then when uh, I got some more information, I realized that I know very little about uh, furnishings, housing, or the elderly. My father still says he's 38, so uh, you know, elderly is not you know, my general cup of uh, tea, so to speak. So what I thought I'd do after looking at um, looking at the topic and looking at the goal was to look not at the traditional view of the elderly or of housing, but rather look at a more realistic view and the areas that there are gaps in the marketplace from the consumer's point of view. And so we're going to concentrate a little bit today not on what you typically see in design or in marketing to the elderly or in, or in um, uh, the literature, but rather on the other half, the other half that are widely ignored um, and potentially much more profitable. So why don't we go ahead and switch slides and let's start out. Well, the first thing I do when I, when I start preparing for a presentation is just Google everything. And when you Google everything, you first end up with things like low income, assisted living, uh, health care, senior communities, normally a lot of bad news. Um, as Merle said in the US, a uh, famous news person said here, if it bleeds, it leads. There's no good news in, in the news. Um, if it's if it's bad news or if something went wrong or if or the elderly are being abused or they don't have proper housing or something's wrong, it leads to newspapers. What you don't see is, is the happy person that lives happily, has a nice house, has income, et cetera, et cetera. So most of our, com our, our perceptions of the elderly are based off of not necessarily reality, but often they're based off of what we see in the news what we see in the newspapers, what we see, uh, the, the stories that are spread around the web, the, everything that we talk about between us. And I think that that might be a, a rather severe overstatement along with most of the stuff in the news. So I've, I've gone into a different direction and started out with, so what is elderly? Uh, later in the presentation, you'll see that somebody defines it as 50 or older. Um, I'm not really comfortable with that, by the way. Uh, and uh, so let's going. start with what is elderly or senior. The elderly or senior really only have one thing in common. Yes, and that is, is that uh, their physical dexterity, for lack of better terms, uh, is starting to fade. So that's what everybody seems to concentrate on. It's making housing, making products, making everything for physical handicaps. Uh, for people that are less mobile, um, that need higher safety standards, basically like handicapped or children. And it's rather interesting that probably 90, 95% of what you see in literature and on the web is built towards infirm, limited mobility, limited eyesight, um, the safety issues, and yet that's less than half of the elderly population. There was a, a nice article that broke the elderly into six groups. And if you look at those groups on how they purchase, we see that the poor, um, the people that need government assistance, the typical elderly consists less than half of that. Most elderly are, are really not in that group. That's the group that needs the highest help, and it's the one we concentrate on typically. However, as businesses, I think that's partially a mistake. What we have now is very high levels, well, relatively high levels of, of concentration and competition in building things for the elderly uh, that are, shall we say, built for assisted living. What we don't see is, except perhaps in the travel industry, what we don't see is, is people building and marketing products to the elderly that are much, about half or more of the population of, of the older people. So that's, oops, wrong one. So that's what I'm concentrating on today. Uh, next slide. 
There we go. 50%, and I took the U.S. Uh, statistics because they're easier for me to get, but it's not uh, severely different from what I saw uh, picking some things up in Europe. 50% of the people over 85, and I picked 85 because I'm way too close to 50, so 50 doesn't make me comfortable as an elderly person. Uh, but 50% of 85-year-olds live independently. My father is over 85. He lives just fine by himself, drives every day, uh, everything else, uh, quite a normal lifestyle. By 2050, that will be 5% of the population in the U.S. Next slide. This is a, a graph which you alluded to earlier in your introduction, the, what they call the demographic crisis in Europe. I don't know that this is such a demographic crisis, this is a demographic opportunity for business. Obviously for governments, for social programs, for issues like that, it is a crisis. But for businesses, uh, for consumption, I think that this is a rather large opportunity. If you look at where most businesses focus their target markets, you'll see the youth, the teenagers, and the middle-aged working uh, group. If you look at the successful businesses over the last decade, you see that they're targeting different areas. In the U.S., you see retailers that are targeting essentially the lower income groups, uh, Family Dollar, Dollar Stores, Walmart. These are being very, very successful, at least as far as profits goes, successful businesses because they're targeting populations that simply aren't targeted by anybody else. And right now we see the elderly being targeted as infirm, and, and we'll get back to that. But there's a lot more in that segment, and that segment is growing very, very, very quickly. And with increased health care, longer lives, better mobility, you know, we're going to see a lot larger group of the elderly as mobile, rich, spending money, and not in a traditional assisted living housing structure. Go ahead into the next one. Uh, again, this is just kind of a, a give me slide, kind of gives points out where, um, where the percentage of elderly are going to be. And if you look, it's in the industrialized countries. This kind of more or less means that you're going to end up with very large populations of relatively wealthy people over 65 that are mobile, that are active, that are doing things, especially in Sweden. Oops, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, again. If we look at the wealth, and if you look at the graph on the right-hand side, we see that the net worth, there was, there was one, I don't want to call it a statistic, but there was one article that I looked at that said that basically 80 to 90% of wealth is held by the elderly in most societies. That may not be true so much in the Baltics uh, because of the transition over 20 years or last 20 years. But in most industrial societies, the people that hold the money are the old people. In this case, we're looking at um, a net worth of over 40 times an average worker held by the, the elderly. Okay. Next slide. Uh, this, again, 47 times. The, the, the elderly have net worth of 47 times. We tend to think of them as, it's always interesting to me, especially with what we're doing in the U.S. with health care and other issues, it's always interesting to me to see that we're, we're transferring wealth from the working population to the population uh, that holds most of the wealth in society. We're moving uh, wealth from tax base, normal tax base working citizens to a large portion of the wealth that already exists in society. Okay. The thing that we're finding over the last 10, 20 years, last two decades, 
is the elderly no longer fit that traditional view. They have money and they're spending it. Now they're spending it differently than a traditional worker does, but they are spending it. Okay? And with the baby boomers coming up, they're spending it more and more in a lot of different ways. Okay? Typically, especially for this particular group, it's important that they're spending most of it, it at home. They're spending most of it in their home, house-related issues. Um, that's the largest category of expenditures. Half of their money is spent at home. Okay. Typically also, there's low competition in this area. People had, had had the intention of more of a discussion, but I'm not sure that's going to work in this format. Um, companies don't focus on the elderly unless they focus exclusively on the elderly. Pharmaceuticals, some travel, but not all. Okay. Um, but we don't see industries focusing, focusing on the elderly as a target market, even though they have most of the wealth, they're spending it. They're spending it very, very quickly. Um, and that it's a growing population. The reason we typically don't see this is that companies want to have a broader target market than that. And once you focus on the elderly, you're seen as, as a company or as a brand image, you're seen as an old company, a company for old people. Okay. So a lot of companies have avoided directly targeting to the elderly, especially home companies, especially areas where they're even travel companies. If you look at travel ads, they have the beautiful people on the beach. They don't have the elderly people on the beach. But if you look at who goes to the average uh, excursion, especially a, an excursion that is led around from place to place on buses, the average age is 65 plus. And yet that's not what's typically targeted because companies don't want to be seen as exclusively for the old people. They don't want to be associated with adult diapers. They don't want to be associated with uh, pharmaceuticals. With They want to be young, hip, and going, and yet that's where the money is. It's the same thing that happened in the US 10, 15 years ago. People didn't want to target the poor, yet that's where the money was because nobody was targeting them. That's where there was a lack of competition. That was, unfortunately in the US, a growing population, especially of immigrants. And yet, and even in Europe, you see people don't want to target the immigrant populations that are lower income. But if you look at the companies that have, Aldi is a perfect example. Okay? They locate a lot of their stores in ethnic neighborhoods, and they have their growth rate and their profit rates are huge. So this is another example of a very, very underserved population. But in this case, it's different than the lower income population is they have money, they're growing, and they're spending it. But it is a harder population to target. Uh, next slide. The other thing about the elderly population is, is that, uh, especially in regards to this group, is that they a lot own a second home. It's becoming more and more prevalent, not only in the US, but also in Europe. When you have two kitchens, you need two kitchens. You need to design two kitchens, sometimes three kitchens. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. It was interesting that this year, the number of second home reached a record high in the UK, with everybody complaining about the global economic crisis and the world is falling apart. And the reason, by the way, that we're calling it a global economic crisis is we can't call it a recession. Even Portugal had growth last year. It's not a recession. The economies are still growing. Okay? And yet, with all the screaming and all the concerns, we see second ownership of second homes is still reaching record highs in many places. It's still becoming common, especially with places like Spain and Greece, um, 
and many other places that have home, home prices dropping like a rock. And if we're looking at the elderly right now are looking at where do I protect my assets? Do you really want to put your lifetime assets in the financial markets right now? People are afraid of the financial markets with good reason. And so they're looking at real property. And when they purchase real property, they need to, they, they often redesign that property. So not only do, uh, do we see that the elderly are spending a lot more on their homes, their primary homes, but they're also buying and redesigning and maybe renting out or maybe going on vacation for second homes. Uh, there is a, there's a link at the bottom, but if you have time, there's an a interesting book on the subject, Affluence, Mobility, and Second home, home Ownership. And it does focus a bit on the elderly and uh, people that are buying second homes, third homes. Um, what we're finding a lot is, is that they, I don't know if I want, the wealthier segments, the, the people that have money that are not yet retired, uh, baby boomer generations, uh, people that have real incomes, uh, 200 plus thousand a year, 400, 500 plus thousand a year, they're not really being hurt by the recession. Matter of fact, they're being helped by the recession because a lot of prices are becoming cheaper. So they're purchasing a lot more. They're purchasing very carefully and cautiously, but they're purchasing a lot more real assets. We don't see this in the news because Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to go out and say, "Hi, I'm rich. I'm purchasing more houses." Right? It really doesn't look good. Um, so, but in reality, if we look at home ownership uh, in Sweden, in uh, especially Lithuania, I have several home, several friends that are purchasing uh, in Croatia and in Spain right now. Um, they're looking for second places, they're cheap, um, and they're buying. So we see a lot of people investing assets in second, third homes. Slide, please. So what else is happening? So they're wealthy, they're rich, they're older, but they're also turning, they also have a little bit different psychographic changes than we're used to from our parents. Okay. Among the what we roughly consider elderly, there's a, <coughs> excuse me, 25% divorce rate. It was less than 10% just a decade ago. People are getting divorced. It used to be they stayed till their spouse until one of them died. And so you have a lot more single elderly in uh, both genders than were typical 10, 20 years ago. The interesting part about this is that these single people are no longer 75, 85, 90 years old sitting in a nursing home. They're now 60, 65, 70, 75, but they're not sitting in a nursing home. They're going out, they're dating, they're traveling, they have an active lifestyle. Um, they're, they're going out and buying second homes, they're doing things, and they're spending money. Mm -hmm. They're much more tech savvy than they used to be. If you look at Facebook, um, the, in England, I love this one. In England, the average Facebook user is 46 years old. We think about our students sitting in class on Facebook all day ignoring us. Hmm, probably with reason, but we th they sit there on Facebook and we think about the average Facebook user as the college student or the high school student. That's not true anymore. Now we see people in their 60s, their 70s, sitting on Facebook, communicating, going out on dates, going out, having a life, going on vacations, going on cruises. If you look at the travel industry, if you look at um, the second, uh, the real estate industry, they're ex focusing on this population because it has money and because they're being active. It's no longer true they're sitting in a wheelchair at home uh, or at uh, an assisted living facility. Now we're seeing much more activity. Mm -hmm. um, people are retiring later, which means they still have incomes. Mm -hmm. I plan on retiring about one day after I die. Mm -hmm. um, 
people are working into their 60s and their 70s, sometimes being forced to, but often not. We see retirement ages in Europe slowly going up. First, we see the riots because they're promoting that. But even when people don't, even when people can retire, they get a second job, they volunteer, they're still out in the marketplace working, either earning money or volunteering. They're very active. Okay? Uh, they have children when they're older. Okay? Um, my colleague upstairs had his first child three years ago. Okay? Uh, he was 52 at the time. Okay? I had my first child when I was 40. Um, we see people having children older. We see marriage, people getting married when they're older. This has led to, this, this trend has led to people being married with children still in the household well into their 50s, sometimes even into their 60s. Okay. Last time I was in um, Lithuania, a friend of mine invited me to a concert, and it was Rod Stewart. And I said, isn't he dead yet? And they said, no, no, no. As a matter of fact, he's, he's almost 70 or he is 70 and he just had another child. Okay. I can't imagine having a, a young child at, at 65 or 70 years old. That's, that's almost insane, but people are doing it. People are having families much later in life and what we consider traditional elderly is no longer traditional elderly. The psychographics, the demographics, and the wealth is changing rapidly. I don't want to say that Rod Stewart is a normal person, however, just don't get that. Um, much more socially active. Okay. The house is no longer a place to sit and die. It's a place to entertain. It's a place to invite people over. It's a place to have anything from having dates to having social affairs to having friends over. It's, it's no longer just this, you know, the old person alone in the house, in the dark, you know, waiting to die. Um, the household now has changed. It's become a social hub and a social center. However, some of the things still exist. Next slide, please. Uh, some Professor some Ryan, of the things... One thing. Now, now we have spent 25... Uh, five minutes. Is it doable? Extra it five is. minutes. Very easily. Yeah. Good. Good. I'll move a little bit quicker. Um, this this just reiterates the points, especially with the baby boomers, the largest generation, both in Europe and the U.S. Um, with them coming into retirement, they have a much different spending pattern. Right? Traditionally, we see uh, older people as more value sensitive, more functional, more brand loyal less influenced by fashion, much more utilitarian. Now we're seeing the baby boomers, much more active, much more self-indulgent. They buy things because they want them. Okay. Next slide. What they want, of course, top quality healthcare access. Not just regular, top quality. Uh, affordable housing, value housing. Low taxes, not good news for the Scandinavians. Uh, recreation, arts, culture, they want, want to be active, they want to have a lifestyle. Next slide, please. I'm sorry, James, please. but we need, to, we need to ask Lifeina to close off their microphones because we saw, you have very much sound in this presentation now. If you can okay. close it, please. And uh, we really like to hear it and don't rush, please. Okay. Um, if we look especially at the baby boomers coming up, because it's going to be the largest population, it's going to be the richest population we've ever seen retire. Um, we're seeing that their attitudes towards purchases and purchase behavior are nothing near what we've ever seen before. Okay? Travel is a necessity. It is not a luxury. Okay? They don't see themselves as old. I can't imagine, my students look at me and they see that I have one foot in the grave. I still see myself as 25 years old and still do stupid things like I'm 25 years old. I find my body can't do it anymore, but baby boomers no longer, they're no longer the same population that are going to retire gently into the night. 
Um, they're going to go out and spend their children's inheritance. They're going to go out and have fun. Um, and they're going to spend it on self-indulgent things like new kitchens, new houses, second homes, travel, enjoying themselves. They want things. They want them now. They always have. And they still do. That hasn't changed. This is a group that demands that the, the saying instant gratification takes too long. This is the group that, that define that saying. Okay? They want luxury. They want brands. And they don't believe government or business. Okay? Whatever you tell them, they're not going to believe it. Okay? They want the truth. They want honesty. And they don't see it often in advertising, in business. And they, everybody has gone after this group because it's the largest and most wealthy and they spend the most. Everybody's gone after this group since they were 16 years old. Every marketer for the last 30 years has gone directly after this group, hard, fast, and now they don't believe anything. Very skeptical. On the other hand, they'll spend money like it's water. They'll drop it any time. However, like all the elderly, the elderly group is not homogenous. The baby boomers aren't either. You got your leftover hippies, you got your yuppies, you got whole completely different groups within this set segment. You got complete diversity of subsegments. Next slide, please. Uh, this goes back to what I was saying earlier, is that you know most of the design stuff that I saw, that I looked up on the web, that was that was winning awards, was based on a, the assumption of elderly being infirm, immobile, uh, ease of access, safety issues. It all concentrates, not all, but 95% of it concentrates on the traditional elderly that we want to protect like a child, not the brand-oriented, self-indulgent, not the elderly that are coming up, the big group with lots of money that want to spend things on brands. Uh, there are just some more statistics basically that say that the elderly are active. They drive, they take trips, they do many, many things. That's the question really comes up for especially this group is, is that, you know, we have a lot of information on designing for the traditional elderly, how to make things safe, how to th make things accessible. What we have, what I saw almost nothing on is designing things for the upcoming upcoming elderly, the rich, the affluent, the I want, the baby boomer generation, the self-indulgent. And by the way, this goes for Europe too. I know, I know that no one in Scandinavia will ever admit to being self-indulgent. But the baby boomer population in Europe is, is much more self-indulgent and much more uh, has a higher propensity to spend their income than any other populations in Europe. Not as much as the US, obviously, but still, this is a targetable group that spends money and spends money on themselves. They're just much more quiet about it. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. I put a couple of links in here. If you just Google uh, mob uh, sorry, elderly and living or senior living or senior designs or anything else, it's almost hilarious what you get. Everything is based on basically the old being is infirm, almost dead. You know, they can't move, they can't do anything, we need to help them. Um, often you'll see the term, I love this one, designed for elderly and handicapped in the same sentence. Okay? It's just almost consistent that we're designing for the elderly and handicapped, not or, not two separate designs, which uh, most elderly now don't want to be associated with being old. They want to feel themselves as forever young. They think of themselves as young, they're active, and yet that's exclusively, not exclusively, near exclusively what you see in design for the elderly. Uh, there was one link that, you know, where to live after 50. This is how people are viewing, businesses are viewing the elderly. I don't know, just raise your hand if you're close to 50. I know most of you look like you're about 30, but um, nobody's raising their hand, obviously. Okay. 
do you really think that you need to go into an assisted living facility but this is how the industry is viewing you they're saying if you're over fifty you're damn near dead you might as well go retire an assisted living facility and you need to wear diapers okay. um, it is quite insulting to the elderly population especially the current population that is retiring uh, next slide please what we see is uh, this is this is kind of more of the same and I'll go through it very quickly but what what we see is the elderly what well, the new elderly um, or the actually even the old elderly um, they're more focused on living alone they don't want to be seen as elderly they want fitness spaces they want green sustainable living they want connections to nature common spaces they want they basically want luxury they, they need they they understand that they need some accessible features but it's not that they want them they just understand that they're getting necessary I don't like the fact that my eyesight is disappearing but I understand that I need not want glasses that's the way elderly are, are viewing life now okay. uh, next slide please the last thing more focused on living design elderly are now wanting to upgrade not upsize traditionally especially in the US we saw things like McMansions people wanted more space they were buying 500 square meters plus okay. um, they they wanted inexpensive but large spaces now we see with especially as they're growing older that's not true they want a first and a second home to be comfortable they want amenities in it they want convenience lower maintenance they want to take care of themselves higher tech not just computer access which is demanded that's just a minimum they want automotive lighting or automated lighting systems they want everything that is comfort high-tech social value that they can show off to their friends um, they have the money and they're spending it and they're buying these features in a smaller but much 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 more expensive home especially on a square meter basis Okay. last thing I don't want to live with old people that statement when you ask baby boomers over and over again you see that statement I'm not old I don't want to live with old people they want to live with people like themselves but those are not old people okay. they will not buy into that they will not purchase it they will not go lightly into the night okay. um, next slide please in some they want the same thing we all want or many of us want they want quality value convenience comfort and technology the difference is they can afford it and they're willing to spend money on it they've built up a lifetime of value many of them are still working many of them have much higher than average incomes and certainly you know 47 times the net worth of the and this is just on average this isn't just the rich people but on average they have 47 times the net worth of a 35 year old working an average middle-aged working person um, and so we see that this market coming up is much different than both our traditional views of the elderly and they don't want to be associated with it the products that work for their parents they won't buy it's some car manufacturers found that out very quickly in the US the Buick people won't buy a Buick because they associate it with their parents even though they're now older than their parents were when they owned a Buick they won't buy it because it's associated with older and I'm not going to be associated with older so how do you address physical there are going to be physical limitations that's not an issue how do you address the traditional physical limitations and yet not be viewed as the old people's product because the baby boomers aren't going to buy it they want luxury they are self-indulgent and they are getting older did I hit the five minutes a little bit or close a bit 
but we can tighten up the schedule from the end. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Reardon, and um, now we move on. And, um,